Namaste everyone and welcome back to the fourth episode of Empower Hour. And I know it has been a huge, huge gap since we had our third episode of Empower Hour. And I definitely want to talk about why this delay has happened. The reason why I have a lot of gap between the two episodes because I am not really getting somebody who is willing and ready to share their story. There are so many people who are going through this particular journey and many of you are struggling with some sort of a fear or if and but in your heart and I definitely want to urge all of you to deliberately work on that fear, come into your sovereign field and come to a place where you do not really have any fear to express yourself fully in front of anyone in your life and that is what is the exact purpose of this particular segment the more people are becoming ready to share their story on my channel the better it is and the more episodes you would get to see now before i start today's segment i definitely want to say that we all are aware that our ukrainian brothers and sisters are facing a lot of challenge right now i feel it is very very important for each and every one of us to pray for world peace as we all know every each and every human being who is doing this is making a huge difference so let's pray for them and let's hold a vibration of peace and strength for the whole world today i am very very excited to welcome a very very positive and cheerful and very intelligent lady from sydney and i really want all of you to listen to her with a very very alert mind because the kind of points she is making in this whole interview the kind of things she is sharing i feel all those points are so so important and i really want to give her a big round of applause because i feel that she has really demonstrated this very well that how you should listen to your own higher guidance how you always need to be in the seeker's mindset it is really really amazing the way she refers to different reading materials she has gone through and i think it is so amazing to see how her guides have been guiding her to different books or different reading materials or different videos which eventually have helped her to understand her journey better most of those references which she is talking in this video we have given in the description of this video so if anybody wants to see and access the material she is referring to you can access those links under this video in a description and thirdly i must say that she is a great example of how one should be positive when navigating this journey there is no need for victimizing yourself and be sad and be painful all the time you can definitely enjoy this journey with a smile so let's not waste any more time and let's welcome achal yeah thanks for having me and thank so you nice so much content. all the time i had this in mind because you have been somebody who has always been emailing me when i was down i mean of course your emails have definitely put so much energy in me when i needed it the most and apart from that also you have been sharing so much of your experience and stuff so i was very much wanting and eager to have you here on this talk show and thanks for your guidance and especially i think the channel that you have created you know even though you make the video but in the comments section i think there's a lot of conversation yeah. that goes on although the guides are always there like even me being pointed to you itself is a form of guidance i only came across your channel finally when i looked at it in jan 2021 and from there it was like the real shift that you know i started really understanding so yeah to whoever is listening just listen to all the videos on your channel <laughs> and you know, just understand it uh, it yeah it is really uh, very helpful i would say otherwise you would be so lost you know on this journey Uh, 
how did you figure out you were on this journey yeah. so for me it's like it's all uh, it's also divinely guided i would say that you know there is like little room for uh, you know questions in my case because uh, what how i know this person is like he's he has been my colleague back in 2007 so 7 to 9 we were working together um he was already married when i joined this company he already had a son who was just like an infant at that time so we are only we have an age gap of one year only so he's like 41 and i'm 40 right um so we are both software engineers we met at that place and uh, for some reason we were put into the same team as the same project really sitting next to each other um and uh, so i was unmarried at back then so we were a group but for uh, i think we were probably more close you know he and me but it was only limited to the workplace like nothing outside the workplace he would never call or meet or anything of that sort and then once i got married i thought of changing jobs so i left uh, in 2009 so it was that short two year period you know there and yeah we didn't feel like if if somebody is thinking that you know the first time you'll see the person you will have some goosebumps and some sort of spiritual experience so nothing of that sort happened it was just ordinary you know and like i said i even fell in love with my husband at that time we then we got married he attended my marriage and um so after that i used to come to see my other friends on and off to that workplace and would meet him also again as a group he comes from a muslim family i'm a hindu by religion although like these things don't really matter and um, he for some reason had this interest from a very early age into spiritual stuff like he has uh, even read some geeta on his own you know coming even from a muslim family he has been to that he does om chanting on his own he does a lot of meditation and also so like he used to listen to osho also i think at one point in time so this is all even you know in his 20s that he was doing well like i probably was nowhere around all this stuff so probably he started i would say even before i start like his you know preparation of what is to come probably started much earlier than me then i moved to sydney in 2013 from delhi so after i moved i came back to you know wind up certain things here and i again thought of catching with these ex colleagues and again i met him and again it was just a two minute conversation right so that's like 2013 was last when i met him and then i met him in 2019 so after a gap of 6 years wow um in between that what happened is uh, i think he came to sydney for some work uh, project and i just found out on facebook that you know like how people check in you know so he checked in and i thought okay why, what is he doing here in australia and then he said i am on a project so probably we exchanged phone numbers then so that you know he could reach me in australia if he needed something so that's how probably he got my number in the first place we didn't see each other when he came to australia just we spoke on phone general talk once again then he called me when i had my daughter in 2014 just to wish me and congratulate me i don't think we were really in touch because i was very busy with my daughter you know i was all alone by myself and i had a little child to take care then when i came in 2019 just to visit my parents uh, i thought you know we should just catch up probably something was building uh, i just felt that there was something about this person that i should meet so we met and uh, it was just a normal conversation once again although i think both of us had some sort of inclination towards spiritual stuff so we were talking things like intuition the non significance of religion and how people get so involved in all these kind of things so especially in india you know this was happening in the media a lot in those days and then we parted like say for one one and a half hours right but then i felt that i i just want to talk to him you know but like then there's no reason to talk right so well that continued and then i went back to sydney and then i think for 10 or 12 days i didn't understand what's really going on but i just thought about him every night you know sitting and thinking and then it faded away you know but what changed after that was suddenly i was put into this whole spirituality thing like even though i was too busy with my daughter and i think she was what four and a half around that time so like i had crossed that stage you know which was like the difficult period with my daughter so i got a chance to attend some meditation class so after i met him what i'm trying to say is that you know 
how his meeting with him probably triggered or started me on this thing and then i also got introduced to something which is uh, there's an organization called mind valley so the good thing about mind valley was that you know they run free master classes with all sorts of best selling authors so even in that one hour master class which is free you get to learn a lot so that's how i learned a lot of spiritual concepts you know and, and that's what got me sort of tuned into this so every you know two weeks there'll be some author you know talking about it people like michael beck with neil donald walsh and you know many such others so some sort of you know that building up of understanding was coming and then uh, by luck or by like it has to happen i went back again to india in january so like within a period of 6 months we met twice <clears throat> and that's when the real thing started because between then it was not like i was chasing him or i was really you know longing for him or anything of that i was like just normal so we met in january it was just one meeting and now i think you know i was like i just couldn't wait to be there it was like you know something was pulling me so my hair was red i just had a wash i didn't even like you know dry or anything i just like and it was winter but i didn't want to spend those 5 10 minutes at home extra knowing that he's already there i just wanted to be there where he was right and i still didn't uh, you know think too much about it like why am i feeling you know such a strong thing to see him so i could just see him you know like he's talking and i'm listening and it's a very normal conversation going on nothing you know uh, high stuff but uh, like after two or three hours i just saw around and so there are lot of people around me because when we went to that place like it was empty and then suddenly it felt like i came out of some sort of trance and i see oh, there are so many people so much food around us and then i look at the clock it has already been like 3 hours i think that i lost sense of time and place as well then i came home and then again i just like couldn't stop thinking about him and then um, we went back to sydney again and i switch on my phone at the airport you know just like how soon after you reach you land Yeah. And the first thing I see is his message. You know, like I was like amazed at the timing of the message, and he's online, and he's saying, "Oh, have you settled?" I'm saying, "Oh, like this landed." For the next few weeks, you know, I again like felt like talking, but then because we were not even really friends, that you know, there was no reason to sort of message him unless you know, the WhatsApp forward or something. Like I can't really talk. So I tried. I tried to engage him in a conversation. but his responses were like extremely short like yes no emojis <laughs> so i got frustrated i said this is not going anywhere and i didn't even think like why am i feeling such things i just kept going with the flow but after two or three weeks i felt like you know i i have to have this but i can't approach on my own right and because uh, like i said with that mind valley thing what happened i got introduced to the law of attraction right and i started practicing it for certain things in my life so i used to write those affirmations and all so when i came back i got this idea <laughs> somehow you know use that <laughs> to get a message from him <laughs> <laughs> i wish i did <laughs> it sounds so silly now but i did so i did some sort of meditation and whatever i read on internet you know if you have to get a message from somebody think of him and imagine them and something i did and then i left it so after i think 10 or 12 days i get a forward from him so i didn't reply i just read it it was some joke or something then next day i get another one so i was outside in the market i thought okay i'll go home and reply but even before i could go home he sent me another one. <laughs> i thought okay now this guy needs attention <laughs> <laughs> because like he's sending one after the other so then i messaged him and then we started talking so that's like our real you know chatting probably started with that and then this whole covid thing started with that as well so this is i'm talking about 2020 right so everybody was at home and there was a lot of things going on around you and then after the point i felt like you know uh, i'm sort of having no expectations from him that he should do this he should not do this because when you start talking then you get to know the other person right his likes dislikes his routine and i felt that probably this is quite unfair on my part that you know i'm expecting him to do certain things and not do certain things so i myself told him one day that you know i'm sorry 
like you know i think i have got into that mode where i'm advising you things which probably is not even my um, area you know i I, sh- i don't have that sort of claim on you that i can tell you these things so i said sorry and he didn't even say oh it's okay or anything he just wrote, like he accepted my sorry <laughs> like as you really i'm guilty of it <laughs> like, <laughs> Another person to say no, no, it's not like that. It's okay, but he didn't say anything. And then I, I thought I'm not going to message him again because I, I think I'm just crossing some limits here, you know. So I didn't. And then ten or twelve days passed, and I started feeling terrible again. Like oh my god, now, now what should I do? Because I only stopped messaging him, like. And again, it was like I want to talk, but I don't want to like I don't have a reason also and. so i didn't want to do it myself so then again i used the last attraction <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny and at this time i was like desperate you know i really wanted just a simple hi would be like enough but i i just want so i think i did something and it was like quite in pain and desperate so whatever i thought you know what technique it was i don't remember but within like like probably 6 to 8 hours i got his message and that really blew my mind and i am just thinking law of attraction only all the time like i am thinking this is working because of the law of attraction rather than thinking that this is some sort of divine or spiritual thing between the two of us right after i met him in jan i got in a call which sort of uh, invited me to join a bhagavad gita class which again i never associated with this whole thing i just thought of it this is happening and i joined along with my husband so it was done by these iskon organization that's what happened like my understanding of what is the soul why are we here where do we need to go you know spiritual world material so all those concepts were like going on in parallel so when i met him after that and you know he came back you know with that chat message and what not i i think i started downloading stuff every morning where i could you know just get thoughts in my mind which were like very beautiful spiritual concepts being explained to me and i think uh, i also used to discuss it with him in my head so like i'll understand something then i'll i'll discuss it with him in my head all the time i'll keep talking to him all day in my head <laughs> i i didn't like even question myself really what's going on like why am i even talking to this person in my head so i just keep going it it felt very good you know all these spiritual concepts being explained i didn't know anything about guides or anything even download like word was not known to me then and then Isn't that a very day, common trait in this connection that <laughs> it becomes very normal that you're talking to them i mean if somebody yeah. else comes to know they will feel that you have gone like insane completely yeah. yeah absolutely so with my this whole spiritual thing what happened with the law of attraction i got introduced to this book called magic i don't know if you have heard of this yeah 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 it's very popular book, i right? think all of us so, who have been on this journey have explored <laughs> very similar things this is a curriculum for all of us we have exactly. to go to that syllabus right <laughs> so i was introduced to this course called magic and i actually wanted to do a different course which was all about you know getting your desires they call it something you know like they'll fulfill 100 desires or something it was a paid course and just when i was about to buy something within me said that no no don't go for this one you go for the gratitude one so the magic book is all about gratitude right you just express thank you for everything so i i thought you yeah, probably i should go for that one so i went for that and i did it very religiously 28 days you know every day i am practicing what they are telling me to do and in the beginning of the course you would know they tell you to write you know what you want like yes. even before you start they say you know write all your desires yeah in an uh, affirmation way or something So I wrote everything. One morning I woke up. I wrote all my stuff that I had to write, and then I sat down thinking about him, and I thought like I have to write something about him as well, like like a goal in my life that I want to achieve. <laughs> and that's when I'm thinking that that you know, like you asked me what are you, what were you thinking for the last few months? You know, why are you talking about him and all of that? That's the first time I really asked myself. why am i even thinking about him all day why am i talking to him in my head all day who is this person really right and then i seriously introspected that am i like falling for him or like am i out of love in my marriage really what's going on in my head and then i thought no of course like there's no problem in my marriage i still love my husband everything is fine then why am i thinking about him all day and 
I don't know whether I was told to do it or I did it on my own. I just sat down and because I knew the universe, I I asked a question like an open question like who is this person? What is he doing in my life? What's his purpose? Because I have my husband, I have everything else. What is this person doing here? And I got an answer: spiritual buddy. <laughs> and I even didn't think of something weird. Like I thought this is quite normal. I asked a question, I get an answer. That's all normal for me. Now oh, when I think that's, that's like, so gosh. amazing. That's really amazing. <laughs> so I get this spiritual buddy, and then I write a whole goal about him in my notebook, in my journal. And now I think I probably I didn't write it. I was probably dictated the whole thing, and I just wrote. Like at that time, I thought I am writing. and you know the kind of words i used in that goal now when i read it it's like how can i even write such a thing so we are not even friends right and i'm writing that i have found a friend for life in him and we uh, both are like perfect spiritual buddies helping each other on the spiritual journey we share a divine pure connection like these are the words i'm writing how come why would you write like divine and pure for anybody you know you met twice and i'm using these words we have done some progress or something on our individual paths like i already writing this that we are going to be on two separate paths even though reaching at the same place and i'm writing we are making progress on our individual path of krishna consciousness because i was into bhagavad gita and self realization for him so i'm already writing that you know i'll be into this whole spiritual stuff while he will realize all of it on his own in some other way i don't know but i wrote all this back then in 2020 isn't and that a clear like, channeled like, message yeah i'm just like thinking my gosh how can i write like why would anybody in your sane mind yeah. think of all this stuff you know for a person you Absolutely. just met and now when i think like i okay oh, this wasn't me writing right it was like all told to me. and even the word you know buddy because this word i don't use in my uh, it's not part of my vocabulary to be honest and when i met him in january he told me about audible and all this like before that i was all into you know just taking care of my daughter i had not read a book in many many years and then he told me that you know this is quite easy you should you know try audible and you don't believe in that year i read like six or seven books in six months okay. so when he introduced me to audible soon after coming i read a book by shri kumar rao it talks a lot about all the you know why are we here and it explains you the concept of the universe and through that book what i did was because it, that book said that you know you can start with small things like asking few things to the universe to do so i used to try simple things like when i go i crossing a road the light would go green so i kind know of, you know very simple stuff and it used to happen so i i realized that okay there is something out there which is talking to me listening to me right i didn't know uh, whether it's guides or anything but i used to call it the universe back then and then the lockdown and all started right and uh, I think he was probably getting negatively influenced with all this COVID and what not, right? So we were talking, and then one day I, he was in a funny mood. He was giving weird kind of replies to me, and then he even said that I'm not in a good. And I was like, if you're not in a good mood, then why don't you just you know go and introspect like what's wrong rather than giving these weird replies? I told him. <laughs> then uh, we didn't talk after that. Then one or two days just passed away. Then he told me that um, I I am sort of not talking to anybody for some time, so he like very politely told me that I am not going to talk to anybody. So it's not like we separated with a fight, but even then I didn't know like what was going to come because I have not realized who is this person, what I am going through, any of that. Right? That's when I really realized that oh my gosh, this is so difficult. Like that was probably our first official separation, I would say. <laughs> and i was not ready like i didn't even know what to expect but then it was terrible like so it got so difficult to the point and because i had started talking to the universe and the law of attraction all of that i told the universe that okay i don't know when he'll come back because this is like there is no set time for that you know that is away for five days 10 days or a month or a year i don't know but when he comes back i want a surprise gift from you <laughs> like from the universe <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, so one day the exercise in that course was that you just uh, thank people, hmm? some three or five people. So I wrote for him, thank you for talking to me patiently and listening, something like that. And after it was eleven o'clock at night, I'm sitting in my room. The TV is on. My daughter is there. It wasn't like some sort of, uh, you know, uh, spiritual environment. It would be, and I close my eyes after writing that. 
and i'm missing him so much so i said in my head uh, when will you come back hmm? and i heard a answer from the other side and he's saying i also miss you i'll talk to you soon and it wasn't like i made up that answer in my head because what really happened is like when you normally think your consciousness is here you know somewhere around your forehead but when i closed my eyes something like i went very deep you know i would say inside and down both somewhere around my navel area or tummy you know i would say it's like i went very deep and there i heard this answer that i also miss talking to you uh, i'll speak to you so and i opened my eyes and you'll not believe that day 11 o'clock as soon as i open my eyes there is this chat message on whatsapp instant and i was like i really had goosebumps like what's going on really first of all i'm hearing something and then he's actually coming you know instantly at that moment so that was like a big experience for me then like, how could this even happen then <clears throat> like i said i was told to share certain concepts with him i used to like being told that you know go and tell him this so every day i would tell him some spiritual concept he would listen patiently one fine day what happened he got really argumentative he had his view and i had my view and then the next day also something like that happened so i thought i should confront him now and i should tell him that i'm not liking this behavior of yours so i said something on those lines that regardless of whatever my understanding we should be polite to each other isn't it he didn't like it at all as soon as i said that he asked me what is more important um you know our connection or the knowledge of the bhagavad gita i said of course our connection right like we have to be nice to each other that is all. and as soon as i said our connection he was like completely switched off from the conversation and yeah he was like you know how you know they create walls around themselves you know and with me somehow when something he does something like that you know i see visions so that day i saw he is like having some sort of glass walls around him <laughs> and i'm thinking what sort of wall is this you know i can even see everything <laughs> and then he said that you know you discuss these things only for your own sake you don't really want my opinion on any of this um you don't want to accept me as who i am and all of that and i'm thinking why is he even talking all this stuff about acceptance and like how does this even fit you know in <laughs> connection like why are you thinking about we have to accept each other right and he said you know you have to accept with me with all my flaws i was like really hurt up with that so for two or three days i was in a very bad mood i cried and i complained to god you know what's going on why was i so mistreated and he told me that time that you take a break from talking to me and i said like how long you want he said i don't know you it's up to you you have to sort out things at your end and so i was like been in lot of pain for few days and i kept questioning the god you know why was i because it was for me it was like forget the spirituality but why was i treated in such a bad way when i was not at fault i was only saying let's be polite to each other then one day what happened i it was just a normal afternoon we were not talking because he said you know you take a break and i tell my daughter to write some spellings like she has just joined school she is year 5 year old and i tell him you write these five spellings and i'm coming when i come back and and when as soon as i'm leaving i'm seeing 222 on the clock and that was the first time i'm seeing a number and then when i come back i asked her have you written show me your notebook so she has written all the spellings that i told her and then she wrote five or six other spellings on her own which are all about disney princesses and you know those kind of things all of them are wrong all hmm? the only spelling that and all between all those words she has written flaws absolutely right a five year old child has written flaws next to the word flaws she has written love l u v love and i'm shocked like i'm thinking like what has she written like how does she even know this word flaws and i ask her what have you written no answer like she knows nothing about that word but she has written it and for me it was a very big sign like how he had said accept me with all my flaws and then i'm seeing two to do and she is writing flaws five year child she has written everything wrong except flaws in her notebook and next to flaws she has written love so to me the message was like love the flaws you know love all his flaws in a way that's what i understood and after that these numbers started chasing me like anything i freaked out so one day i was like crying like anything and just sitting next to you know my temple at my home i'm crying and crying and then i don't even remember what happened i got these two words twin flames like i just woke up from that place 
and i remember that i went and started googling twin flame now i think like how can you even make up to these words like which i have never heard in my life how can i just go and start googling stuff like you have never heard so that is a big sign for me that you know like i have not read about it somewhere and then start believing that i am a twin flame and it's not like that absolutely i am literally given these two words which i have never heard in my life and then i start you know searching on that word and then i kept searching searching and i i didn't come across any of your responses to anything on kora i did read a lot of stuff upon kora but it was more about people who are either you know um, saying all sorts of bad things about this sort of connection you know how you find all these things or it is people you know who are unhappy in their marriage and they are talking about it so i kept thinking this is not matching with my experience in any way right i kept doing this all i think for two or three days until i came across a blog from a person that follows you also um and whatever i read in her blog it absolutely matched my experience you know how telepathy and all she spoke of kundalini awakening and those sort of things and like you know you can have conversations uh, just as you're across the table and then she said people who in this connection are normally married you know that's how it goes usually it's not like it's not a romantic sort of that thing so everything that she said you know kind of matched but then it left so many questions in my mind like why would you know such a concept even exist what's the whole purpose is that so yeah i didn't like i i somehow accepted that i am into it but i was trying to make sense of it and it wasn't making sense so i even wrote an email to her and i you know did few email exchanges and she then pointed me to you like when she saw that my questions are not getting answered by her she told me that you know pradnya is the person who is like the authority in this chatter so she and i think you had started a, a youtube channel then right so she told me oh now she even has a youtube channel you can go and check but i went to your channel and there was i think hardly one or two videos back then in 2020 like some intro or something and then i read some of your blogs probably you had said you had read some sort of partial union and you, but you still don't talk to him every day you know you probably talk once a week and i thought to myself my gosh <laughs> reaching that stage you know talking once a week would be like so difficult so i thought okay probably she has reached some very high level i am not there yet i don't even want to know about <laughs> so i really thought okay this must be like a high ideal but i am not there so i don't want to really know much <laughs> so i went back to my old stuff. <laughs> and then i didn't look after you know your channel or your blog for at least another year or so but then like that's how you know look at how we were introduced and i like found out about you for some reason i had this feeling that i'm not supposed to contact him you know i i thought that he will contact me and then reading about numbers i kept reading 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 so it took me a while to really accept that this is really happening with me like i'm seeing numbers first i thought oh this could be a coincidence that could be a co-. so i was like sort of discounting it somewhere i was reading one night and it said you know that 11 11 is the most uh, you know significant number in this regard so i thought oh i haven't seen 11 11 <laughs> you know like that was just my thought so like this is not it <laughs> and then after the reading that article i for some reason started reading the comments under you know how people write comments under the blogs and the second comment i note that time stamp is 11 11 so i am just thinking I haven't seen eleven eleven, and then I see eleven eleven exactly right. Then the comment is saying, "We are all connected through our vibes and karma. Trust your inner voice." Hmm? And the next thing I notice, the name of the person who has made that comment is exactly the name of my twin. Exactly with the full name, name and surname together. My so his God. name, eleven <laughs> eleven, and what he's saying is, "Trust your inner voice." we are all connected and that was like oh my god that's such a big sign i thought this is like impossible to happen you know <laughs> like as a coincidence so that's when i thought okay that's it this is whole twin sense twin sense stuff is real right it's happening <laughs> so, <laughs> that's when i kind of i thought i accepted it but i honestly i would say i would never really accepted that we being one soul and all of that until probably few months ago finally after 7 weeks i only messaged him i said i am not even asking anymore i am just doing it <laughs> and he was also quite happy at his end uh, to you know finally have me back and then we discussed you know what really happened i was because i had read so much on kora that you know you should never mention it to them because they will not accept this that so i was quite 
um, apprehensive about sharing what I have been through in these seven uh, weeks. And those seven weeks are like really painful. I don't know if they were dark night of the soul or whatever they were, but it was tough, very tough. So <clears throat> one day what happened, I was trying to tell him in some ways and he wasn't getting anything or he wasn't really answering properly. I got frustrated. I deleted his number. And that night he's asking me, did you block me today on my uh, on WhatsApp? And I'm like, my gosh, why is he even like, because I deleted his number. I didn't block him. But I thought, my God, how could he know about it? You know, like I said, no, I didn't like, why would I block you or anything? He said, no, I got a feeling like that. I was like shocked, you know, how could even this reach him? <laughs> it was like, you know, secret being told. And that was probably the sign for me that, okay, you know, something is really going on. That's when I told him about the whole twin flame concept because otherwise I was very afraid to, you know, even mention anything on that. So he listened to it. Probably I also shared him a few blogs or something. He read it. He didn't say a word. So I thought he's all right, you know, whatever I've told him, like he didn't fight or anything. So I thought, okay, <laughs> that's fine. But then... <clears throat> After, like, it again, the conversation started going negative, and again, we had a fight. Then I asked him clearly, that, Do you accept something? He said, No, he clearly said no. <laughs> and I was like, So upset, so angry that why didn't you say it in the beginning itself, right? Like, I like kept thinking that, you know, we are believing this. So at that point, I also sort of gave up this thing. That, like, for me, I thought, you know, why even get into like, for me, it is like we have to talk to each other, right? I'm not thinking about the bigger picture or anything of that. So, huh. okay, nothing like this exists. We are not talking about things anymore. So, I gave up. One morning, I woke up, like, just a few days after that. And I woke up, like, being told a story in my head. And in that story, I already know who all the characters are, what the context is, the situation, the scene in that setting. The characters in that story are me, my buddy, and God. Wow. Right? okay yeah so one morning i wake up somehow we both are friends or i don't know whatever is that kind. like we are there together we enroll in some sort of school by with the teacher hmm? who is like an amazing very spiritual advanced person he teaches us everything and that school is across a river bank and across the river bank is a garden that we can see from the other side it's a very enchanting garden and we both often think of, you know, visiting it someday. But we can't because we are on the other side of the world. And even while we're en enrolled in that school, I'm seeing that, you know, I he only asked me to enroll in that class with him. But he hardly attends any class. He's not there most of the time. Uh, but I'm very diligent as a student. I attend all the lessons, all of that. And one day, the teacher, who is our uh, teacher, he takes us in a plane and lands on the other side in that garden. And he says that, you know, I have taught you everything that you have to learn. Now, using that, both of you cross this river and come back to me on the other side, like where we were originally, where he was having our school. But there is a condition that both of you have to come back. If only one of you comes back, you both fail the test. Now, imagine I am waking up one morning and I am already having this story in my like, I always used to think, can I, you know, make up such a thing in my mind? So what happens when he la he leaves us and he, he goes away back in his aeroplane. And then we both start looking at the garden. So my buddy says that, you know, um, let's first explore the garden now that we are here. And then we'll go back. The teacher has already said that come back as soon as you can. Like, you know, that, that's also a condition. But he's not interested in that, like passing the test or anything. So I keep, you know, telling him, let's do it, let's do it, but he's not interested. Finally, we have a fight and he leaves. So now I'm standing there alone, helpless, because I can't go back also because I've been told if one of you comes, you'll fail. So then not knowing anything, what I do, I call upon my teacher, like just, you know, come and help. So he being a divine person, he appears. Like, you know, how you see in Mahabharata, Ramayana people just up. Then I ask him that, you know, see, what have you done? Like, why have you left me with such a person? Why am I even supposed to return with him? And he tells me in my story, I'm asking. And he says to me, because you both have some issues to address with each other. So I'm asking, but I have already done all my lessons. Like, why, am, why can't I have somebody else as my buddy? You know, why this person? <laughs> <laughs> and God is saying that, you know, crush your egos 
and you will see that both of you are the same he saying it in my thoughts in my head and then i said like but how am i supposed to deal with him you know look at him what has he done he just left me all alone here so god is saying see the good in him and he will come back soon hmm? just send him love he is saying all these words see the good in him send him love and he'll come back because i am saying like now where am i even supposed to find him i don't know he just left and he said love but i don't love him right i love my husband i'm talking to you know him in my uh, thoughts in my story all of this and he's saying not that kind of love then i said which love are you talking about then? to my teacher in my story and he, then i said like like the kind of love i have for my daughter he's saying no no not that as well because he's saying both these all these loves that we see here in this world they are full of expectation even though we think you know we are unconditional this that it's not unconditional even with a child you have some expectation right that they will do something for you and these end with the uh, lifetime like when death will happen you will be apart right so you saying i am talking about different kind of love that goes beyond lifetime and that is unconditional and that in my story i am then suddenly struck with the enormity of that bigger picture that you know what this is all about and by that time and then i'm still arguing with him that uh, uh, i have done what i have to do let me go you know so god says okay don't forget the test i'll take you back let it be and then he gives me his hand like this you know come and i like froze in that moment i can't now accept his hand and go without my buddy so god knew that i would do that but he was testing me to make me realize that you know i actually even though i have been arguing that i want to go i actually can't go and then when i got the thought in my mind like, i can't leave him here like that god just disappears mm-hmm. so that my teacher is actually god when i kept asking him you know this that then he suddenly shows me his real form that he is not the teacher he is actually god himself and he has put us so the meaning of the story is that this enchanted garden where we are both you know happy is this world where we are distracted with you know all sorts of stuff home is the spirit world and that river is to be the cycle of birth and death that we have to cross but then we have to come back together not you know just one coming and leaving the other behind there is this book called laws of the spirit world which is also a yeah, channel book that. and I, I, uh, i thought of that yeah it says you know like you are supposed to keep each other accountable and yes, all of that yes yes yeah, yeah. in that it is also yeah. mentioned that you know when the split souls are working with each other they are accountable for each other hmm. or, and, and and it's a way of keeping us accountable so that we keep progressing otherwise we'll just you know be complacent and not do anything right yes but imagine you know, me just getting up one morning and me arguing with him and it's not like i'm just going through my normal day i am you know brushing my teeth and cooking and and but this is going on in my head i'm like having a chat right this itself is such a big thing right and then he, he's saying such things about you know uh, you being the same if you crush the ego you will see and all of that and then see the good him i think that was like the biggest thing for me and that probably has helped me in this journey so for all those people who are really you know listening i would say just you you know love the flaws see the good in him and that's really going to bring him back and i'm not saying that you know god said it to me and when i actually implemented it probably after a year <laughs> it did work for me so when i read that book you know course in miracles i couldn't read the book i read that book uh, return to love that actually explains you know how properly how we think we are not in that ego or whatever but actually we are and the crux of that teaching is that like god created us as divine beings right so they are saying that each one of us is that you are not just your twin like everybody in this world is that divine soul so you have to see them in their divinity you know that perfect flawless being that god has created so forget what you are seeing in this material world yeah huh? so this is all just a role play or whatever you want to call it right you see this person who is working somewhere who has a certain identity or name or religion a body a look right but that's not who he really is he is that divine and especially your own twin you know imagine what so much he is doing for you right he has come with you in this world to help you progress to go back home right just with that thought you know you are so filled with gratitude for that person Absolutely. right absolutely 
so when i actually realized and kind of understood this whole thing i really used to you know touch his feet in my thoughts every day i used to get so much of you know love and gratitude that my gosh this person is going rather than thinking you know he's fighting with me and what not or he used such a word for me and this you just like forget all of that you know that's what the true bigger picture is that oh and then once you both get healed because we are not there yet right so many people are like what is the mission what is the mission right many people have this question what is the mission but to be there you first have to be, get ready for that work right the job that will be assigned Absolutely. to you and Absolutely. we are not ready so why even worry about what is the job but the moment so when i told him to inflame and he didn't say anything when we he was trying to like ask me indirectly uh, i was telling him about the numbers also that i have been seeing all these signs and numbers so he kept saying so what do you make of it so what do you make of it i said isn't it obvious like because i thought it was so obvious no i am sharing that we this twin flame thing and we are talking about each other so i said isn't it like clear that you know we are twin flames or something but the moment i said you know that we that you are my twin flame i wrote that like that that moment my heart really you know started really beating fast i got cold chills on my forehead and something left my body from like the crown chakra like i felt like some sort of gush that sort of you know left here i don't know what it was whether it's kundalini or something but that was the experience it just lasted for a second or two right so that again was quite unusual you know just saying a thing on chat and you suddenly getting this well so then <clears throat> after that what happened is like we really got into chatting we chatted like anything for three or four days like literally day and night there and what happened was i lost my sleep altogether for those three days so even at night like i was free chatting because i got nothing else to do <laughs> we are chatting at night and we had that time difference also right so for him it wasn't late so we spoke about a lot of stuff and then i kind of even asked him like you know to be my companion on the spiritual journey i asked him like would you want to be so first he said something like a no but then later on he said sorry sorry you know and then, then he said yes so to me it was like okay we have both accepted this concept and we are kind of on it but then after a few days like i said i clearly asked him and he said no i i don't believe in any such thing then it was again a big fight and then what really happened is when we were talking both for those three or four days then i told him twin flame along with these numbers what happened i my daughter again started writing stuff on papers so she is having a coloring sheet and she wrote three things she wrote one was like love can come from any land like imagine a five year old child writing things like this love can come from any land and all sorts of weird spellings she write but i could read the message the next one she wrote happiness can spread everywhere and the third one was love can fill everyone's heart so like such deep thing and she's a five year old child and she's writing and i am like i i don't have anybody to you know even share like what's going on so i am kind of freaking out that really this is somebody you know out there talking to me and what does he want from me what am i being put through and all of that then i saw a very important vision one day i didn't even know that we have to call this thing vision but now i know that me my family like my husband daughter and his family are all sitting on a round table with some sort of soup bowl i would say and i am holding the jug right and i am pouring into my bowl or cup then he sitting next to me i am pouring in his and then like that you know so at the end of it it's like all of us have our bowls full right uh, so for me it's like happiness can spread everywhere and love can fill every heart probably meant that you know what i got out of it because i had already read some twin flame stuff by then was that if i love myself then i can love my buddy and then we can you know keep passing on this love to everybody we come across so it will become like a chain of love and that's what is expected of us to do in this journey and then last year i heard a nd experience by a person called howard storm so he goes through that nd and he asks jesus what do you want me to go do when i go back to the earth then jesus explains to him that just by loving the person that you are with you are you can actually heal the world because it will become like a chain of love and forgiveness right so that itself is a mission in itself you know and it's not easy at the end of the day right like just loving everybody so that i was able to then relate with my vision which was a year old that okay that's what i was told and 
I was like really indulging into chat. I would say, you know, I would do all day, all night. Even at night, I would wake up and see his message. So my husband was also noticing that something is going on now, right? Because she's not even sleeping at night and all this. So what? Like I said, I had given up on the spiritual side, the bigger picture. So one day in my chat, that my twin says that uh, suddenly, out of no context, she's saying, "Why do you think you have been attracted to a person like this? Uh, stop fooling around." These are the exact words. Stop fooling around and look at the bigger picture. <laughs> and I'm like, "What is he saying? Like, what bigger picture? How is this coming from where?" And I'm already going through something in my personal life then. I'm upset, and next thing he's saying, and don't discuss it with me. So he's giving me this message: look at the bigger picture, stop feeling around, and then he's saying, don't discuss it with me. And I'm asking, why are you writing all this? What do you mean? What is the bigger picture? Are you again going back to the twin flame stuff? And he's saying, I already said, don't discuss it with me. Right? <laughs> don't discuss. It. <laughs> I, that got me like worried. I said, my gosh, now this is something again happening, you know, from the other side. and what is the bigger picture i don't even know you know what i have to focus on like and fooling around like what are these words you know they seem very harsh words to me well <clears throat> we continued and then i was reminded of because i kept reading about this inner work inner work i didn't know like really what is this inner work and you were not there kind <laughs> so i did not think like, what is this inner work so after that what happened i remembered of some past uh, you know relationship i had even before marriage Uh, that i had broken with and i somehow for some reason i was reminded of this person and i felt somehow that i still thought of myself as guilty of whatever had happened so probably uh, that was like for me a moment of forgiving myself and releasing that pain and you know guilt so i thought probably that is also a part of inner work then my birthday came he didn't remember you know all that normal stuff <laughs> that happens in this one day what happened like i was telling him about this guy that i had broken up so i was just telling him that for some reason i have uh, been reminded of this and i feel that i was supposed to forgive myself probably i forgave him but didn't forgive myself and while i'm telling him this he is telling me from that side that you know once you deleted my number on that whatsapp i felt a very weird feeling now i understand what was that feeling i said no oh, okay six after six months he has understood what is it he says it's a trap literally he said it's a trap i said okay what is that he's saying you know um, it's a trap that uh, once i become you know sort of attached to you you will leave me i said wow. like what okay. what's really going on <laughs> 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 and like what once i think i'm involved with you attached to you you will leave me and i was like we are not even together so what is the question of leaving right like how does like unless you are a couple how can you even leave each other but what what i felt was because i had broken up with the earlier guy i thought he is making some judgment based on that that's what i understood that's how i took it in a very negative way that now because i have told him something He's thinking like I'm this kind of a person who would just you know leave people this that. And he said that once my husband and her his wife would find out, I would leave. And that was like so difficult to get hear from him. Like you know what does he really think of me that I'm such a person who is just doing some you know pastime and then I would just leave. So that triggered me really badly. So I was in so much of pain for one day when my husband noted that my mood was like really upset, and he knew that this was about this guy because he had been observing me for quite some time. That she's on the chat all the time with this guy. After one day, something within me was like so hurt. I thought of you know sharing my feelings with him. So I wrote it to him on chat that this is what I feel about you, and I am not leaving this guy. So no response as expected. <laughs> Two hours, three hours went by. Then after uh, three or four hours or late at night, I think he responded something, and then he said, "What will I do with such feelings?" Because I didn't write it very clearly. I, I wrote him, you know, I have these feelings for you, but you will not understand. I put like a key word against it, saying that you are not going to understand. <laughs> uh, and I also like wanted to be very clear that you know these feelings are not to be confused with my feelings for my husband. That was my biggest fear. Like I wanted him to be very clear yeah. that. Yeah. Don't treat it like any other, you know, worldly this thing. Correct. Where you know Correct. it's like you are romantic or something. So I like, but probably he wasn't even thinking on those lines. But I just wanted to, you know, put that. 
and that made matters worse because i was like talking so many things and he wasn't getting anything what i'm trying to get so we had uh, he came back with some sort of he said like why would i even want such feeling which i can't understand them is that <laughs> then i slept it was late at night then probably he thought about what he is doing right so early, early in the morning i'm seeing sorry messages from him sorry sorry for my behavior like a person who would never say sorry said sorry to her three times <laughs> <laughs> you know how so- getting a sorry is such a big deal isn't it, it is it is so, especially here yeah, it is yes that's what i'm saying in in this connection right normally it's okay <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, that day i tried to explain to him that okay i have feelings but you know it's not same as my husband or this that i don't think he was getting anything but after two days he became normal after 10 days or so he was saying something he was sounding weird it sounded like he was you know questioning me on something he used to do that a lot you know question me all the time and never give me the answer <laughs> or even whatever i'll say he will not you know uh, give any reaction to it and it was just frustrating right so he said something i called him that you're sounding like a dictator i use those words <laughs> i said you're sounding so distant and you're sounding like a dictator and me saying it was like giving the end of the game that day and he got really switched off after that and i thought oh my god what have i done because i didn't really you know intend to go into another separation or something so i got scared again that oh now he'll go back to <laughs> not talk to me so i tried to you know sort of handle the situation but it didn't work so i wanted him to be like you know closing that conversation at a nicer note but he didn't so i got again more upset and i was so upset that my husband and daughter was also noticing that she's really really you know angry and my husband by this time knew that this is all going on and she's upset whenever you know she she is probably into a problem with him or whatever and i told him also that you know i'm getting angry at my family also because of whatever you said but that was the last thing he used a very bad word for me that day and it was like now just go away don't talk to me okay so we again went into a no talking then after 10 days i'm seeing my husband is acting weird so i finally question him you know why is your mood upset you're not acting normally with me and he has been like watching it for a few months now and i would really you know appreciate his patience with me that he didn't even bring up the matter even once until i only asked him even then he was like quite uh, like why how should i say it this that and then he said that you know what's going on between you to you to like keep chatting all day what's really going on and then you get upset when he comes back you are like okay this that so he was observing my emotions as well and i was like filled with so much of guilt that day even though i thought you know i had pushed it all away i remember you know your that diagram like just like instead of guilt acceptance and something you know you have those five things that i remember so i thought i was over it you know this whole guilt thing but when my husband mentioned it was all bad then i i told him that you know this is not what you are thinking this is something different i told him about twin flames also i don't know what he understood out of it but in a very very brief way i used i tried to explain i shared some experiences with him and like you know how my twin had said that when both of them will find out you will leave me he actually you know sort of i think gave me a heads up that this is coming for you right <laughs> so i was like sort of kind of prepared that okay i'll have to have this conversation sometime right and it happened and it was new year just a day before new year well my husband didn't take it very negatively he sort of understood that she is into some sort of Uh, emotional problem he at least accepted trusted me that okay i am not like sort of cheating or anything but then i kept crying for the next two or three days so he thought probably i needed some help to get out of this situation and i told him that you know i am supposed to do something some sort of healing because that's what i read everywhere but i don't know what to heal to be honest like i don't know what is this inner work or something all about and then after that fight i was again somehow in a way guided or told i got a thought to go back and check your channel once again and this time there were like 10 or 12 videos by that time on your channel it spoke about uh, what is in our work it spoke about how uh, like you are going to be on a different thing and your twin is going to be on a different thing because all this time what happened like i i was told he's my spiritual buddy right and then like when we met we spoke of intuition meditation and all those things but then i when i were i used to tell him you know about something he wouldn't practice anything or i would say i even gifted him a bhagavad gita book and i thought probably he read but he never read it. 
so i used to think like what sort of you know this is going on he says something but he doesn't do anything yeah so i personally thought that we will both be learning the same stuff we will both be reading the same books you know going practicing same like you said you know magic and all those books law of attraction but he wasn't doing anything so i used to like think very negatively that he's not doing anything he's just talking about stuff but when i read your uh, you know your uh, i saw that video about matrix and spiritual then it dawned upon me that oh it's not going to be same you know he's doing what he's supposed to do and, and, and until then he never mentioned anything that he's also going through something right well after that big fight in december it took me forever to bring him back i tried calling him i tried everything but didn't work then i was kind of through led through lot of things many of them were nds right like i told about hobbs from nd raymond moody I, i heard a lot of videos on uh, near death experiences dr rajiv parthi right his nd it was a very short nd experience but he mentions about seeing angels you know um, angel gabriel and archangel michael so when i used to see this number i used to see angel numbers you know how people call them and i used to think like even do they even exist but when i heard his nd it was like oh yeah they do exist like i believed whatever was in his nd and then in his nd what happened there was he mentions that he saw birds in the sky a course in miracle he didn't know what is that back then when when he had his nd and then he came back and he realized this is a book and then he started reading that book and, but when i heard his nd something within like my heart almost skipped a beat when i heard that word a course in miracle but then i thought like what is this book that you know like in the spiritual world it is shown to him like it must be something really big right like who is really the author of that book i was like curious you know who has written such a book that you know um, even god is uh, mentioning it to somebody so then i started reading about that book and i find that the people who are written that book they are just the scribes uh, they are it's a channel book uh, jesus is dictating the book and the two people who are in that they are also in a very similar connection i would call it a twin flame you know even though they don't use that word and that uh, jesus is talking to them about this kind of connection in that book at very length and he is calling it a holy relationship that's the word that that book is using so <clears throat> i couldn't read that book because it's not like a very easy to read book it's a very cryptic kind of and then another book which is sort of a summary of that book called return to love by marian williamson and that book is like i probably the, the most uh, you know foundation book for me where i really understood what is this you know that bigger picture that we have been talking yeah. about all this while that's what really made that picture clear to me okay so for me the bigger picture is that we are all here from the spirit world right like why do we even take birth because of some sort of ego or something that we wanted to go through right so now we are here so now we have to go through a set of learning like undoing all these negative traits that we have acquired and so this so the purpose of this birth or any other birth would be to return home and home is what home is the spiritual world. so this earth lifetime is a process of learning and healing all that negative so like how god is all love you know all divine unconditional love all forgiving no judgments see so he created us also like that but over the course of time time means many many lifetimes we are no longer in that same state we have now uh, acquired this egoic uh, you know thoughts so we have to go back to that divine state right so this journey like the whole twin flame journey is all about first of all healing yourself healing the other person that you have as your buddy and then once you are there then probably healing the world you know either just by helping people or doing some sort of specific sort of purpose like you are serving here or writing a book or it could be anything but even if it's nothing like that i think just loving you know love the person you are with sort of thing itself i think it's it's a mission in itself it won't even get revealed to you if you haven't yeah that's what i'm saying because you are not ready right why would you be like even and then you know i used to always think how will he come back how will he come back and uh, you know i used to I probably read your uh, post also where you said you know prasad came back and he said sorry and then he also even expressed his feelings for you so when like all this was happening i read this book that's what really put me into that surrender state and i knew that uh, i will get such an email <laughs> <laughs> I knew <laughs> because you got it. I was like, okay, I will also get it one day. <laughs> so I was really expecting it. <laughs> and then one day, what happened? I got a dream in which I see birds in the sky, and it says, "Soul origin calling." 
and then there were certain words which were hidden and then the last word was thrive so next day what i woke up and i thought of this dream and i because i didn't know what to do like what is soul origin i got this question suddenly like probably it was a telepathic thought to find out about the origin of the soul like how does even soul you know come into being like the birth because yes. even if you read bhagavad gita it doesn't talk about how the soul comes into being it just talks about like souls are eternal they have always been there like that so i tried to google some stuff about the origin of the soul birth of the soul i didn't find anything i slept and then i get this dream then i google next the words just soul origin calling then i find a book which is called origin of the soul so something within me said just get this book right and it is by a person called dr sam walter and he is like a reincarnation expert so he has done lots and lots of case study good thing about this book is that it kind of summarizes a lot of other books in it yeah. he himself only tells that you know this is a summary of this book in that book i am seeing signs this person who is the author of this book he used to work in a company which has now changed its name but earlier the uh, name of the company was called union and the next two letters are 76 which is actually the birth date of my twin so it's like showing me union 76 union 76 so well i knew that he's going to come back because you got that email i will also get that email <laughs> one day <laughs> and i'm getting a lot of signs and all of that and you can't believe it was like almost like so much signs every day and i'm really asking them So okay, signs are there, but where is the email? Right, that you are saying is so. I was almost like that. The email is not coming. Only the signs are coming. What? <laughs> and then one day I did get an email. You know, <laughs> can you believe? And the email said, "Sorry." You know, he said, "Like I'm very sorry for my behavior. Hope you are well." Yeah, he said something like, "Like life was too short to you know waste or something. Life is too precious and too short." So my God, like has something happened with him, or is his last email? The you know the way he's sounding in that. But I had uh, like when Prasad left, you know that whole fear of death was big in me. With Prasad leaving, a lot of things shifted in me. So I had this fear that I can also lose him. Just you know, one fine day I'll get this news that you know anything can happen. And he was not talking to me. I was blocked on all sorts of things. So I didn't know what to do. But what happens is whenever he blocks me, I start writing emails to him. <laughs> It's like if I can't get to here, I get to here. When I spoke to him, I realized he also had a big fear of death, like really big, and he couldn't explain why. But when we talked about it, I tried to tell him, but I think we can't help them in certain situations, right? They have to overcome whatever they have got. So he sort of, you know, then after a few months, he overcome that. and then in 2020 i was once told to read this book called uh, journey of souls by michael newton i yeah. that kind of made me help understand these concepts of soul planning how we choose our lives you know because i knew all this but i never accepted it to be true i always thought no no like you know this doesn't make sense <laughs> because i was into that law of karma we are just you know experiencing the punishment or whatever but like choosing is a whole different way of looking at you know like you feel so empowered about it so i accepted that so that whole reincarnation thing plus this plus you know a lot of things kind of made me that whole spirit world uh, picture very clear to me then like i said star wars you know this time again okay was star wars was star wars and i'm like okay finally i did started watching it and it's like a huge uh, movie series you know it's like nine movies and every movie is like 2 hours plus I kept watching like nothing is is making sense, but I okay just keep watching, keep watching. And in the last but one movie, there are two characters who are like this. You know, they can talk across time and space. There's a lot of running, chasing. Uh, they are not like a couple in the movie in any way, but and they are on the opposite sides. You know, fighting each other and all of that. And some things I click. You know, okay, this looks a bit similar <laughs> to what I'm seeing. You know, and then in the ninth movie. Actually, the guy tells the girl that you know we are a dyad, hmm? and he says uh, dyad means the two that are one. He he says these dialogues, and that was like I really paused the movie at that moment because I wasn't expecting something like this in that movie, you know, out of nowhere. But this was like the biggest sign for me that now this is like enough, you know. I have to accept that this is true. We are actually yeah. one soul and all of that. So I did that night. it was like you know there's like i we always say you know there's definitely knowing and feeling so it was like knowing all this time but that day i really felt 
that year and that i think probably made a big shift at his end as well so when i read that book return to love and i actually went into that he came back with the sorry email <laughs> i always <laughs> joke that if i was thinking at where is the other part of it you know that love <laughs> part <laughs> that email is a bit incomplete isn't it <laughs> because i was expecting both the things will happen right but it didn't happen then but when i took this um, star wars and i did accept that after few days he unblocked me on his own like i didn't even talk about it or anything he just did it on his own and after that things just really moved very fast you know it like we were no longer fighting we were both telling each other that yeah we have understood this is a spiritual journey we are knowing uh, you know that we are getting signs we are getting thoughts for each other all of that like you this know this particular but- incident what you are describing is a clear uh, example of how acceptance can shift things big time yeah yeah and you know few days ago i was just telling my twin about uh, something i was saying that in that boy girl story i used to wonder about the story how will the boy come back like i used to think in my head that god came to me he told me everything what about him <laughs> like i was still thinking no, he is not doing anything a beautiful quote uh, yesterday in something and he said what is the difference between an enlightened person and an unenlightened person and the answer was the unenlightened person sees a difference So that's exactly what for us you know we think we are awakened they are not awakened so true. but if you are thinking about them like that then how are you also even awakened right like you are not really awakened you are just in the ego thought only that you are better than them in some way right so true. like you are so making progress i am doing the work these are not <laughs> thoughts of any non egoistic person right yeah. so to me one thing i would say is like for everybody who is like thinking they are in separation and he is not doing or man nilly come back think about yourself do you really believe you know the concept you know the label you know the blogs the story the channel everything you have gone through it but do you really believe that you are one soul i don't think so because if you were believing that really feeling it inside then there would be no anger for him right why would you feel anger this is just you in another body right true like if you don't do something do you get angry at yourself if you haven't read a book or if you have got a bad habit if you get anger do you beat yourself up no we know that we have a shortcoming but yeah. we don't really get upset so much or you know yeah. but with them you have all those problems that he doesn't say this he doesn't do that you know or if it's really you in another body then then there is no sense of complaining right sure. then that person you have to just love and forgive and that is all and then the second part like the so god said see the good in him and like the fourth miracle teaches that don't look at what you're seeing in this package which is this physical body right just look beyond that that there is a divine eternal being yeah once you just do these two things that they are really you and he is a divine being not this person which is full of flaws that's it once you accept it and feel it things will shift no doubt about it mm-hmm. but it is very difficult to get to that state that is for sure right you know you feel like my god this person this being is doing yeah. so much for me just by his presence Absolutely. you know you are going through so much right so i would say like it's so much of respect and gratitude it's not even like whether you you know he's a poor man and you are a woman or anything it's just exactly. like oh you have to thank him right yeah. and my you know my twin told to me that i i felt a shift in you 6 months ago he said it to me like on his own and then like when i said i accepted it after that star wars thing he just you know unblocked me on his own he did everything so that question in my mind how will the boy come back you know so my twin said very beautiful thing two days ago i was talking to him about something and he said that have you heard that saying it says you know when the student is ready the teacher will come <laughs> yeah he said when the girl is ready the boy will come <laughs> that's exactly what really happens in this so when you are ready you know in you know, and you have to learn a lot of things you have to first let go of your ego your healing this that plus you have to understand the bigger picture like many of us probably forget that spiritual side of thing you know why do we take birth where do we have to go yeah. what is our purpose here and then not limited only to your twin like yeah. you know that love unconditional love has to be for everybody not just like okay i'm good with him but again i am you know angry person with everybody else in the you world. you know the next part of that saying when the person <laughs> is there the student is ready the teacher appears <laughs> and this is when the student is truly ready the teacher disappears <laughs> oh my god i don't want to know that. 
but i guess I that's very not true. ready that's very true in my case because in your case too uh, I, i when i got really truly ready he literally disappeared so i mean of course you don't does, need him physically he disappeared yeah. so. but yeah prasad leaving again was a very big milestone for me to as well yeah right? he I was actually like i knew him for many people he was because <clears throat> uh, since he passed away i have been um, you know so many people are contacting me and telling me that there was such a huge shift in their personal journey because of that mm-hmm. because of him i think he was sharing that news because we all related with you so much and then suddenly such an unexpected thing happened and to me it seemed like i have always known him like when i saw his pictures and all it was like oh yeah i know this person you know <laughs> even now i think about him a lot like whenever i think of you i always think about him like even in my emails i write you know all this his name yeah. because for me yeah, it's like you two are like one team you know so you're doing it all together it's like uh, i think that's the most like when i said he unblocked me then we went on a sort of where we acknowledged a lot of things to each other that yeah we are on a spiritual journey to this point that now even he talks about me like a spiritual buddy like he, he actually uses that term then he never accepted something like a guide like i at some point accepted this thing there's a guy called garnet shuhauser if somebody is just you know out of interest wants to read his book with him what happened he actually met his spirit guide in person the guide actually came like a person like a homeless person on the road for him and you know uh, appeared to sort of have a chat with him and explain to him so it, it's a very interesting story but i think when i read about him i kind of accepted that okay there is a spirit guide kind of thing because before that i was quite doubtful about you know i used to think like i get something but for my twin he didn't even accept that this is something external like a divine guide he used to say intuition so and to me intuition was like something coming from within you and i used to always argue like the kind like the boy girl story or you know like i sitting and getting that twin flame word these are not my thoughts like how can these even be my thoughts right like i don't even know this content how can i just think of it like an intuition intuition is something you know but you just get a feeling right but now my twin also accepts the concept of guides and also he he talks in those wow. forms okay. <laughs> i i, I definitely can... want you to talk about your latest meeting with him because you met yeah. you came to india and you met him physically and there is some interesting unfolding over there so that this whole covid thing we couldn't meet yeah. in two years because of you know but i think this was all very well planned that this all the work right yes. so when he came back i knew that now we will have a meeting one thing is that whenever i used to express my feeling and say that word love he would always say i don't understand what do you mean by this word love and i was like do you really have to explain this word like everybody knows that <laughs> so i made it very complicated for him why because i was always saying if i use the word love like a normal love then he will think it's the same like my husband and you know it will get very uh, messy so i was like okay i i have these feelings but then it is not like <laughs> then like when i said he came back then we started discussing stuff that okay we are both on the spiritual journey we are there and we are both uh, we understood the pattern that this you know talking and no talking will keep going until we reach a certain state or we learn something that we are supposed to learn so we were both sort of acknowledging all of that even for the boy girl story like when i mentioned it to my husband the first time that when he i just said whatever you know teeny little things i one day got a guidance and i was doing some puja that go and tell him so i told my husband the whole boy girl story everything i i told him that you know i hear things you know i go through certain experiences i shared some of the things which were like like my daughter writing all those stuff so it helped me like i was told that now you can open up right earlier i was scared to you know share anything with him so before coming also i told him and then after i landed we i felt sick and this whole covid thing was going around i was i don't know if i got covid but it was like a flu and so many obstacles were coming like we both agreed that you want to meet but we just couldn't meet and even after coming we went to one or two fights <laughs> 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 like i tell him that you know they were probably the, some of the last things that we had to smooth before we could actually have that meeting in person because yeah we were not there yet so the guides are like no no you're not ready i think i'll say you know for all the uh, people who are listening that don't think of uh, forgiving as like they have done something wrong and you are sort of you know the one with a bigger heart who is forgiving right <laughs> it's not like they have done something wrong like i said this is a divine person here doing a role play for you 
just treat this whole thing like a role play like you get on the stage you even kill a person right Right. but there is no punishment or anything once you're out of the stage it's like you are friend like that so he is doing whatever he is doing for the sake of this journey and your learning so you are not like forgiving a mistake don't even look at that mistake you Absolutely. just see that divine being in him right such a important so point that, so what i'm saying is if you are thinking from a logical worldly point of view their behavior will always probably be on the wrong side you know they using harsh words they hurting you they not calling or whatever it could be yeah. but don't look it from the worldly point of view it will not make sense in this there is no such thing as logic logic goes out of the window very soon right and the sooner it gets out the better it is for you absolutely like people say should i contact him that's a fear do it if you feel like do it if they will be harsh on you it's okay at least you do it like in my case when he was not talking i tried everything right it didn't work okay that's fine so why think if i talk to him he will get angry at me he will say something that will hurt me this is a fear in itself right, right. and also, especially to those you know who are like in the no talking period say for months or years don't keep waiting forever even just go and reach out to them what will happen if they do not talk it's okay but at least make an effort right initiate Absolutely. don't just sit waiting that they will come on their own because this whole surrender thing i think it's confusing people think we have to just sit and wait forever <laughs> in my case i always reached out to him you know after a fight i would always reach out to him knowing that i have messed it up or he has messed it up whatever like even if he would block me i'll go on the email but i still reach out to him so i would my advice would be you should reach out don't just keep waiting if it has doesn't have to work it will not work out regardless of you trying but if you don't even try then certainly it's not going to work out right it's not even possible without you actually taking an action because like i said the love is guaranteed you can't take it away you know even if you want to you can't take it away so, so don't be afraid just do what you want to do and the biggest example is like you and prasad right because what i would say like whatever is going on in anybody's journey at this point whoever is listening to us at this point all your followers i'm sure you and prasad have been through that situation because <laughs> yours has been such a long journey you have done all sorts of scenarios all you know possible uh, situations you have been through and when i was in that like you know that whole separation period surrender this is what i used to think all the time that whatever i am going through at this point you have been through it but yeah. at the end of it he came back right at the end of it prasad said okay that everything is true So I always used to think that I might be going through a separation. He would have blocked me. He's angry with me. He doesn't believe in anything. That's all fine, because Prasad also didn't do any of it. Right? <laughs> so, but at the end of it, he accepted all of it. So I used to think like that. Okay, whatever is going on, it's not a big deal because in the end, they all come back, right? So he will also come back. So to all the twins, you know, who are on this channel, I would say, regardless of whatever your situation is, you haven't spoken to them for two years, or they have blocked you, or they are calling you bad words or fights. We have been through all of it. You and Prasad have been through it, right? In your journey, especially thirty years, I am sure every possible situation would have appeared, but it all worked out in the end. So just have that faith that okay, nothing is going to be worse than you know that it will turn around. But only if you. do your work right yes. i think that's, that's the key thing we sort of yes. have that faith and and believe in it you know like for me i think after a year i started believing because listening to your stories and those examples i think okay this is possible this will happen like that feeling of one soul has to sink in if you are complaining about them then you haven't got that feeling so you're not ready right so that is the key we all talk about it we are awakened but actually probably you haven't got it yet and then last i would say you take this very seriously because this is like about a job or an assignment to do this is not like just about you and your twin just you know getting into a cordial relationship or something that is much more to it right yeah your your getting together is just a part of that plan but the plan is like much bigger than you but like i said your getting together is also a part so don't think that okay you know the divine is not going to bring us together this is all about no you have to get together you have to get ready but there is more to it right like one example i always get in my head i don't know if it's because of the guide who said like suppose you are in a war 
and your twin get taken by the enemies right and now he, they have kept it in some sort of bunker or whatever so obviously your strategy would be to release get release him right to rescue yeah. him but the bigger picture is still to win the war right you can't just say okay i'll release my twin let's rescue him and then let the other go right like we don't care about what happens and also when you will go and re- rescue your twin probably there will be others who are also in that bunker you know kidnapped or taken by the enemy so once you rescue would you leave the other i don't think so right yeah. so you will rescue your twin but then you will also rescue all other people who are stuck with him and the bigger goal would still be to win the war right so look at it like that you have to get to your twin you have to get him back you know in a cordial relationship or whatever you want to call it in harmony with him but while doing that there will be other people you who you will help and you can't just say okay i'm only nice to him but i'm not nice to my husband or to this person or that person right when you will have a learning of unconditional love and forgiveness it will be for everybody you can't just like uh, you know isolate people and say i'm nice to him but not to him. we met what happened is i was hoping that he will express his feelings because even there i used to ask him openly that you know do you have such and he would just avoid the question or you know something like that and i used to think like and it's it wasn't a surprise for me to me like for some people they saying it probably would be a surprise like probably you are thinking he doesn't feel anything or something of that sort for me it was not like that he was expressing it already in so many other ways but just saying those words you know wasn't happening but i knew that this has to happen like because of your email right? <laughs> like i always thought that people do come back and say it one day because it has happened with all other people so it will happen with me also i was hoping that this so then uh, when we i came here uh, we first met we met twice actually so first time he said uh, that he mentioned on his own that you keep asking me that question i said yeah i keep asking so what is the answer so he's saying uh, you should just see it in my eyes or you know feel it like i'm not going to like answer it in words or anything i said okay then i knew that what he's saying like right? there's no confusion about it now he's already saying it that i'm not going to say it in one okay then doesn't really matter and he has even also discussed it with me sometimes he saying uh, what will happen if i say it <laughs> we have even been through that conversation then we met again and then after in even in the meeting he didn't say it we left <laughs> without saying it after the meeting he messaged me and <clears throat> just a normal conversation have you reached on this that all okay this that and then instead of uh, you know saying a bye he just just said it just just said just like that you know and then like am i reading it right <laughs> and because he wrote it in a very abbreviated way he was like l y so i was like am i really seeing it <laughs> or i'm imagining so like all of them are like that because when i heard your interview with and i heard prasad you know how you were mentioning about it i mean oh my gosh you know they are like reading from the same book it's yeah, yeah, like that, absolutely you know? Yeah. Exactly same guidance and yeah, it was very funny how and like you said we probably go to the same set of books and same sort of uh, learning so maybe it's all okay they have a curriculum we have a curriculum and <laughs> we, yeah. drama but it's very interesting but yeah. I'm just in awe of you know how things have changed like 180 degrees with him like you know how first the topics that used to really piss him off are now so easy to talk he talks to me about it and yeah so to the people you know who are wondering because i used to think logically how can this you know shift so much like he's so upset and now he will suddenly accept all of it but yeah the magic will happen once you are ready when when you go actually, through what you have to go through actually it is so just our limited thinking it. which makes us think in this linear manner or that how yeah, yeah. is like a big concern of us how is this going to happen like you know yeah. so like my twin said once the girl is ready the boy will come <laughs> just remember that so no true it's ready. such a great message i think this whole interview we can just that when the girl is ready the boy would appear the boy will come it is so hilarious but i like it yeah you can do it i not tell him that he has to go to the